Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh sister. So you've written into us about some difficulties that you're facing in your marriage right now and you're not really sure what to do at this point. So I think the first thing I want to point out in your situation is that you feel like you've married somebody that's in a different social class to you and that's really where the difficulties are stemming from. But I think we can look more broadly here at the fact that generally getting married to someone is uniting two families that are almost always from completely uh, different social norms. So very often you'll see people get together who might have come from you know, different countries or even different counties within the country. They might have come from different cultures, they might belong to different races and that, com you know, that comes with its own challenges in adjusting to um, a different culture, a different race and their different social norms. But also what you find is even in couples that have come from exactly the same culture, that are from the same race, that are even from the same town, there are different social norms within their families as well. So generally two, two people getting together from different families comes with the challenges that relate to adjusting to life with somebody who follows completely different social norms to what you're used to. And this is really part of marital life and this is why it's important in marriage to make compromises for the sake of the marriage. So it, you need to adjust to the life of another person and make compromises to meet them, just like they have to do the same with you as well. And the main thing that seems to come forward in your case is the financial differences. You came from a more wealthy, perhaps more comfortable life financially, and things are a bit more of a struggle now um, from the background that your husband has come from. And I think the first thing you need to do here really is to ask yourself, what is more important? Now you say that this man, your husband, is a pious man, he's a good, honest man. And this is this is a brilliant quality to have in a husband. This is what many women are looking for in their husband. Um, so ask yourself what's more important to have, would you rather have a husband that's pious, honest, trustworthy, but doesn't have so much money? Or would you rather marry a man that does have lots of money, but he's not a very pious man, he's not necessarily trustworthy and honest, because these are the qualities that come with piety. So Alhamdulillah, you have a man that at least has the best quality. So take a step back and ask yourself what's more important and, and would you really rather be with somebody that has all the riches but doesn't have that piety that your husband has? After all, you know, you know, if he has his faith and he treats you well, even if he doesn't have the finances, then the finances, the financial issues don't really matter um, because he treats you well and he, you know, he fulfills his obligations from an Islamic perspective. And this is more important and will lead to a more fulfilling marriage than one that is filled with wealth but doesn't have the piety in it. So instead of focusing on the things that you've lost, you say you've lost your dignity and you've lost your state of state status, instead of focusing on the things that you've lost, instead focusing on what you've gained. You say you want to be um, you know, a servant of Allah and you've gained somebody in your life that can help you to achieve that, but that's what you want to achieve. So focus on this gain instead. So you know, we've looked at changing the focus on um, your husband and focusing on his positive parts in that he has the piety, he has the taqwa. So focus on the, these gains within him, but also use this as a means to change your own focus as well. So instead of focusing on the things that you've lost, you've lost, you say, your, sta your status and your dignity. But instead, change your focus here um, in terms of um, focusing on more dini matters than um, material life matters. So instead of focusing on um, trying to gain status in this life, trying to gain dignity in, life, in this life, focus on the things that can raise your status um, in the light of Islam. So instead working on things that will improve your deen, that will improve your, your, your faith. And these things will also help you to increase your self-esteem as well. And I know you wrote there that you have an issue with your self-esteem. So if you change your own focus to away from material matters and more towards deen matters and increasing your own um, deen, your own deen and your level of iman, then this will help you with your self-esteem and it will help to improve relations with your husband as well as you come to realize that actually he does have good qualities and the fact that there, there is less money in your life now than there was before will help. And you'll also find as well that as your, your level of iman and your deen increases at this point, that you'll be able to realize that actually even though you feel like you've lost because your financial status has reduced, 
you come to appreciate what you had when you had it, but also you come to appreciate that there are actually people out there that have even less than what you do now as well. And that really helps you to appreciate the way that you are now and the status that you are at now, because there are actually people that have even less that you, than you do as well. I think the other important thing to mention here as well is that you say that what you're going through has meant that you have cut your family ties as well. And I think it's really important that you make sure that you try and rekindle these family ties as well, because we know in Islam it's very important to maintain these family ties. And this will be part of, as well, increasing your own iman and um, working towards your own deen as well. So please do make sure that you um, rekindle these family ties. Maybe, you know, you say you're a bit embarrassed by your house, maybe meet them outside to start with until, you know, you feel more comfortable to invite them to your house. Meet them outside, at least maintain contact via the telephone for now as well. So at least be maintaining contact, even if it's just in a in a little way for now, until you manage to feel more comfortable in your environment to invite them to your house. Um, then you can deal with those things after, but at least do maintain family ties, at least at a minimal level for this for this time. For the sake of our life, not just for your for your own sake and for your own family's sake. So may Allah guide you to do what's best for you, for your husband and for your family. May he make it easy for you and may he grant you guidance on his path, inshallah. Ameen.